I'm a Labour Member of Parliament for Leeds North East. Uh, I've been an MP since 1997. And in 2009, I had a debate in Parliament on equitable um, and the scandal of the lack of compensation. Uh, and so uh, since then, I've been very, very involved. Um, and uh, I've, I've sort of campaigned with EMAG and Paul Braithwaite and the rest of uh, all of you here today. Um, to ensure that justice is brought to all pensioners and investors. Uh, true justice, not 22% to 100% compensation, as per the Parliament government. How can it be possible for a government to be encouraging young people to invest in a pension, but on the other hand, the previous, previous generation, perhaps the uh, baby boomers, are being diddled. Can you explain? You're an MP. No, I can't explain it. There is no explanation. Uh, as I said in the Westminster Methodist Central Hall just now, this is a moral issue. And politi politicians of all parties need to have a moral agenda. They need to know what is right and what is wrong. And to me, when I saw the facts and read the Ombudsman's report, I knew this was wrong. And I knew government had to do something. Sadly, a lot of my colleagues didn't see it as a priority. Are they treating it as if the money's coming out of their own pockets? No, they believe that there are bigger priorities for taxpayers' money. And I don't know of any bigger priority than taxpayers who have lost out through catastrophic regulatory failure, which is exactly what they want. So is it a question of then two wrongs don't make a right? I can't quite work out if that fits. I, listen, I can't explain this. <clears throat> I went to see the then Chief Secretary of the Treasury, Liam Byrne, and I asked him to make this a manifesto commitment, because if he did, not only would he be writing a wrong, not only would he be implementing the findings of the Ombudsman, but he would be doing something that would at least re-establish some faith in politicians, the political process, and my own party, the Labour Party. That's the, that's the, the least important factor. The most important is to re-establish trust. Trust in the citizens that politics can change their lives and right the wrongs of, of people who've done, done bad things. Why has this gripped you? Surely it's not a vote catcher, is it? No, it's not, no, it's not a vote catcher. Why has it uh, gripped you? Because I, I became a politician because I wanted to see justice prevail. I wanted to fight injustice. I wanted to support fairness in society. And I wanted to see greater equality. And I see all three things being contradicted by the actions of this and previous government. And it's wrong. If something's wrong, it's wrong. And we have to put it right. What can you reveal about your own pension? Presumably, you're, you're not with Equitable. No, um, the all MPs were with Equitable originally, um, until 1998 or 99, just before the crash. And the money was moved, the pension funds were moved to a different a provider. And uh, I don't know who we're with now. Um, see, I read the statements when they come out. Um, uh, so you haven't lost anything because of this canny move. And no MPs have lost No anything. MPs have lost because the parliamentary authorities made the decision. I didn't, but the trustees of the fund did. So had the MPs been caught with, uh, with their money in equivocal, do you think they might have had a different disposition? I think they certainly would have done. There are a lot of MPs who, lot, don't get me wrong, a lot of MPs who want to put this right, an enormous number. But unfortunately, they're not in the government or on the front bench of the opposition. Can you name any MPs who are blocking you, who haven't got <laughs> shares in equitable life, as it were, got their pension, uh, which is okay for no, them? No, I mean, I, I, I can't because I don't know. Uh, they don't reveal that information to me, and, and I honestly don't know. And I think it would be unfair to single out individuals. I've mentioned Ian Byrne because he was Chief Secretary of the Treasury at the time. It was his responsibility. Um, but it would be wrong to actually pinpoint individuals. There is a systemic failure, and that failure is one of not just imagination, uh, but of moral judgment as well. And that's why I think it's such a priority. If everybody here was on benefits, would there be a different scenario? No, no, I don't think there would. I, I, I just, I, I believe that the people who made these decisions or advised politicians on these decisions, and they must carry responsibility for them, did not see past the vast sum of money it was going to cost and the fact that they could do without the support of those people who lost out. 
um, it's, it's plain and simple. It's, it's just wrong. And it's incumbent on all of us to put it right. But I made the point just now about trust. And if you destroy trust in this, you destroy trust in everything. And the fact that we exchange a piece of paper for goods and services is based on trust. We trust that money to have value. As soon as we lose that trust, the money has no value. If, if the leaders of the main parties were standing where I'm standing, what would you tell them? To I, I would say to them that you were about to commit more than £50 billion pounds on a rail scheme that I don't believe will deliver what it promises. And it's certainly in my city of Leeds, actually, we could do with that money spent on public transport in our city. It cost a lot less. It might actually affect my life. And you're about to commit £100 billion pounds over 20 years to a weapons system that will not protect us from the biggest enemies we have, and that's jihadi terrorism. Um, you can't fire those nuclear weapons at the jihadists. So they're not going to protect this country. Let's spend that 150 billion on many, many an increase in the value of the nation and the restoration of the money. We want our money back! Now! We want our money back! Now! We want our money back! Now! We want our money back! Now!